All right, we're going to open it up for questions, if anybody have any. All right, Leviticus 10, if there's no question. All right, in the ver first verse it says, And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, This is, this is, is it that the Lord spake, saying, I will sanctify. I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, and before all the people I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. Now he had to go talk to Aaron because these were his boys, and it looked like they were doing something that God wanted them to do, and they ended up dying in front of him. And so Moses went and talked to him, and he said uh, that the Lord said, I will be sanctified before the people. Now, that lets me know some that what what uh, Nadab and Abihu was doing wasn't glorifying God at all. They were glorifying themselves. Okay, first of all, that's that's what we're going to look at. But but it's a it's a whole lot going on here because you had to look look at what was going on in chapter nine and it, it, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about. And the thing that I want you to see in chapter nine is the last verse. 24. Chapter 9. Okay. Leviticus 9. 24. And it said, There came a fire out from before, before the Lord and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering and the fat, which when all the people saw, they shouted and fell on their faces. Now that's good, ain't it? That's good. Well, I want you to see in Leviticus 9 and 10. And when you go read the whole chapter of Leviticus 9, here they are, they're getting ready to start the, uh, the priesthood, Levitical priesthood. They built the tabernacle, and they're getting ready to uh, offer up the, you know, uh, the tabernacle as the place of worship. And so they gather up all these different sacrifices that God has commanded Moses to gather up. And then they put the sacrifice on the altar. But the, but the, but the sacrifice is not a sacrifice until God approves. Yeah, yeah, I got to see it. And when God approved, because he had told them once the fire started, it's supposed to burn continually. You can't let the, let the fire go out. And so when, 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 the, when the sacrifice was approved by God, he sent fire down from heaven, scriptures say, and consumed the sacrifice. And so the blood was shed. The sacrifice was perfect. And because the blood was shed, and the sacrifice was perfect. The fire came down from heaven. Y'all gotta see. Y'all gotta see. Y'all gotta see this. Y'all gotta see. Y'all gotta see that the sacrifice was was good. The blood was shed, and fire came down from heaven. All right. Y'all y'all see that correspondence there, right? And we're gonna get back to Nadab and Abihu in a minute. But I want you to see that the blood was shed. The sacrifice was perfect, and the fire came down from heaven. All right? Let's move on to John, the first chapter. All right, John, the first chapter. Of course, we know in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And so we know he's talking about Jesus. And he gets all the way over here in the 29th verse and said, The next day John see of Jesus coming unto him and, and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh uh, take away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh the man which is preferred before me, for he was before him. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bear witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and in the boat upon him, and I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending, 
and remain on him the same as he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Flip over to Matthew 3. Okay, Matthew 3, verse 11, he said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now, I just want you to see this. Now, we just talked about uh, the two, two who died because they didn't offer up the right sacrifice. But then we saw when Moses offered up the right sacrifice, he had the, he had the perfect sacrifice, he had the blood, and then he had the fire. All right, we see Jesus, who is the perfect sacrifice. He shows up on the scene. He's the perfect sacrifice. He's the lamb. Then all of a sudden the voice speaks from heaven, and then the spirit comes down upon him like a dove. Now, what does is, what is the fire represent? The spirit, because he said, I, I, you know, I, I'm coming baptized with water, but I know one who's coming who's going to baptize you with the, with the, y'all, 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 y'all getting it already. And he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So I, I just want y'all to see all this connection. We, we finna really get in it. We finna get in it. Okay, let's go to First, first John. First John. Because yeah. I want you to see why God allowed them two to be killed. Okay, First John, uh, we're going to go to chapter 5. Okay, chapter, uh, chapter 5, said, uh, verse 5. Who is he that overcomes the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he that came by water and, and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it's the Spirit that bears witness, because the Spirit what, is true. Okay, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. I know we talked about it, but we're going to go back over this again. Now, he talks about that there are three witnesses in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Okay. Now, he says the word because Jesus wasn't the son until the word came down from heaven and became flesh. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God, okay? But this same word came down and wrapped himself up in flesh in Mary's womb, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So that's why he's called the word in heaven because he didn't become the son until he was begotten by the father through Mary. He became the son. Okay, so in heaven, they, he said they, they bear a record. So when they bear a record in heaven, that means they wrote it down. And they wrote everything down that was going to happen, and that Jesus was going to have to do in order to, to redeem mankind. That's why he can say he was a lamb slain from the foundations of the world. Y'all, y'all get what I'm saying? Because they wrote the record down. And Jesus also says in Revelation, uh, uh, that I think 19, that that he, his testimony is the spirit of prophecy. In other words, his, his very, his very he, you know, we always talk about testifying about one thing or another and, and the experience. But he said his testimony will be what he said he's going to do. And then he's going to show up and he's going to do it because he said my testimony is the spirit of prophecy. Now, that's good, too, because we can't have the testimony of Jesus without testifying through prophecy. Have you ever heard anybody say I'm testifying, have the testimony of Jesus? Well, if you don't believe in prophecy, you don't have the testimony of Jesus because Jesus said that his testimony is the spirit of prophecy. So first you got to know what he said he was going to do, and then you got to believe that he did it, and now you got to believe that he's going to continue to do the work that he said he's going to do. That's how you testify of Jesus. I believe he's coming. I believe he's coming back soon. I believe he's going to gather up the church. If you don't believe that, then you, you don't have the testimony of Jesus Christ. You got a different testimony. But there's three witnesses in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. They, 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 they wrote it down, and, and the scriptures allude to the fact that they sealed it with the king's seal. 
because that's what they did. That's, that's how he described it in the Old Testament when they got ready to, to seal, you know, uh, seal a thing so that if there was any dispute and they had to come back to it later on, they would, they would seal the record up. And they would put the king's seal on it. And if you put the king's seal on it, that means that nobody could come and open that thing up except for the, somebody with the king's permission. You had to have the king's permission. And if you tried to open that thing up yourself, it, the sentence was death. And so that's why when we get to Revelation, we see Jesus sitting on the throne. And we see the father sitting beside him. And he holds up the book. And the book got seals on it. And they said, who is worthy to open up this book? And John looked around and he saw it crying because he didn't see. He looked at me and you. He looked at all of us. <laughs> and he looked at us and we were there. And he, and, and he said, who is worthy? He looked around. He knew we wasn't worthy. And we couldn't open the book. And he started to cry. And, he started, and then somebody, one of the others came to him and said, that's all right. Don't, don't cry. We, we got somebody that's worthy to open that book and loose the seals thereof. And the scripture said Jesus stood up, grabbed the book out the father's hand, and said he was like a lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. And he had the wounds in his hands and he had the wounds in his feet. And he stood up because he was worthy to loose the seals and open the book. That's good right there, y'all. And then, then it describes who he was. And so you don't have to have no dispute because he was the lion from the tribe of Judah. The same, same one. You know, he was the seed of David. He, he came out of the line of David. And so, and so we, we got it. He picked up the witness and he said, this is what we wrote about ahead of time. And that's why Jesus was always going to follow what, he, what was already written. And when he was confronted by Satan, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't want to know what anybody else said. He wanted to know what was written. And he always brought up what was, what, what was written. That's right. And that's how we had to learn how to be. We can't follow what somebody said. We can't follow how we feel. We can't follow our flesh. We ought to go back and say, you know what, no, no, devil, it is, it is written. Y'all get what I'm saying? Because I, I got to do it. If I'm going to do it uh, uh, by his testimony, I got to do it the way he said do it. Even when it don't feel right, even when it don't look right, even when I want to just so bad do something else, if, if I can just hang on and do it the way he said. But then he goes on, verse 8, and he said, There are three that bear witness in the earth, the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. Okay? How can two walk together? Y'all get what I'm saying? Lest there be agreed. So now he's, 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 he's got us convinced now that the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit walk as one. They're three, but they're one. If there were disagreement, they would never consider themselves one God. We're three, but since we agree, we're one. Y'all get what I'm saying? And so Jesus always said, I always do the will of my Father. That means that there's something always else always pulling at me. There's something else always talking to me. There's something else that's trying to always get me to do something else. But I'm not choosing it. I'm choosing his will. I always do the will of my father. See, the dilemma was when he was in heaven, Satan said, that's easy. You're in heaven. But if you become like them, can you still follow your father's will? And so he came down in, in the likeness, the scriptures say, of sinful flesh, just like us, with the same same temptations, the same issues and everything, but he had the faith. He said, I'm going to believe in my father, even if that belief takes me all the way to the whipping post, even if that belief takes me to the cross, even if I got to be slaughtered, I still believe him while I'm crying. I still believe him while I'm hurting. I still believe him while I'm being betrayed. I still believe him while they're pulling off my beard. I still believe him when Peter denied me. I still believe him when all the other disciples ran. I still believe him when the 70 disciples left and wouldn't allow me to minister to them anymore. I still believe him anyway. And that, that's, 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 that's some good stuff, ain't it? I always do the will of my father. So they agreed. All three agreed. And now he comes and he says that the blood, the water, and the spirit agree in one. But what is he saying? Well, we, we talked about Sunday when we were talking about Nicodemus. And we talked about how Nicodemus came to him and he told him he must be born again. And he defined what being born of water meant. Born of water just simply means being born in the flesh in the mother's womb. And so he had to be born of the water. And then he had to have blood. And the spirit had to agree. 
All three had to walk together. Y'all, y'all got to see that. Let's go back to Adam. When God created Adam, Adam had a perfect blood. He had the spirit of God dwelling on the inside of him. And, and so everything he, he saw, he was following the will of God. You know, he, he had his flesh into subjection because the flesh uh, hadn't taken in sin. But the blood was made to be, uh, to be, to be the witness. I need y'all to see that. The blood was made to be the witness. And the spirit of God was, was made to, to, to listen to the witness of the blood. Yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all get this. Y'all get, let me, let me, it, the, the spirit was made, given to him, and the blood gave the testimony. And the spirit knew when the blood was testifying for you or when the blood was testifying against you. And as long as the blood was perfect, the spirit testified that the blood was perfect and it stayed with Adam the whole time. But the minute that Adam took in something that wasn't, he wasn't supposed to and he took sin on, something happened to the blood. And the blood which was testifying on his behalf began to testify against him. And when the blood began to testify against him, the spirit of God left him because they no longer agreed. And he said, how can three walk together or two walk together unless they would agree? That, that's good. Man. That's good. You had a question? Right. The blood, the blood is testifying. The blood is testifying with Adam whether or not he had followed the will of God or whether he had not. And once he took on sin, then the blood began to speak against him. Now you move on to Cain and Abel, like Dave was talking about. This is the first time that the, that the scripture speaks of the blood. And the first time that the scripture talks about the blood, the blood is, t- is talking. Yeah, 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 I get what I'm saying. And so, you know, it's a, it's a law in the scripture called uh, the law of first mention. And when you see something mentioned the first time, you can bank that thing all the way throughout the Bible. And so when you see the blood the first time, when the blood is, is, is mentioned uh, the first time as the blood, the blood is speaking. Now, what are you talking about? Well, uh, uh, like David would say, when, when, when Cain slew Abel and God approached uh, Cain, he said, where's your brother? And he said, you know, do I look like my brother's keeper? Or am I my brother's keeper? And, 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 and so since he was getting smart, God went ahead and let him know, I can hear the blood of your brother crying to me from the ground. In other words, the blood just spoke. The blood told on. The blood, the blood was testifying for Abel, but it was testifying what, against Cain. And so the, the blood hit something that didn't have a voice, that cursed ground that God had cursed. And the blood hit that dirty cursed place and that which couldn't speak began to speak because the blood hit it now this now the book of hebrews said this is a picture of the blood of christ because we're the dirty ground y'all get what i'm saying and we didn't have a relationship with god we couldn't talk to him we couldn't pray to him why because we were cut off because we were cursed and because we were cursed our relationship with him we didn't have one but the scriptures say when the blood hit us that that, we, that couldn't speak begin to speak. And the relationship that I didn't have before the blood, now I got that relationship after the blood because now the blood begins to testify on my behalf. Y'all, that's so good. Now the blood is testifying to God and the spirit that I'm okay. And so now the spirit comes back to live in me, not because of my blood, but because of his blood. And his blood says I'm okay. And his blood testifies for me. And so because his blood testifies, now I, I, you know, I can have a relationship with God and it comes and lives inside of me. Now, the blood doesn't wash the sins away from my flesh. He washes the sin away from my sin-sick soul. And he said, because this flesh, he said, it's messed up already. And he said, he, Paul put it like that. He said, in my flesh, what, dwell what? No good thing. And then, then he went on to say, he said, that, you know, he said, flesh and blood can't enter into the kingdom of heaven. So, so this flesh and blood were messed up by the first blood. The flesh is the flesh's blood is testifying against it. Y'all, y'all got to see that. And so that's why anytime we try to come to God doing anything on our own in our flesh, God can't receive it because the blood is speaking against us. The blood of the flesh, because the scripture said the life of the flesh 
is in the blood. And the flesh is dying every day. So there can't be nothing good about my blood and about your blood. That blood is testifying against us. And if we're trying to depend upon our own blood to get before God or to get eternal life or to get everlasting life, that blood will testify against us every time. And so we won't be able to get in. Mm -hmm. I'm asked to miss? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because when we ask to miss, we're asking out of the flesh. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're and she's talking about that scripture where it talks about, you know, why some prayers don't get answered. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the scripture says we pray amiss. Mm -hmm. We're praying for our own selfish gain. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and we just want, you know, it's like an impotent man, who, you know, uh, uh, praying so he can, he can become sexually active again so he can go out here and sleep with a whole bunch of women. Well, you're praying amiss because you're not praying so that you can have sexual relations with your wife. You're praying so you can go out here and sin with a whole bunch of different women. You're praying amiss. You're asking God to help you, enable you to go out here and sin. Y'all saying I'm using an extreme example, but it's true. And that's why so many men dying of heart attacks on Viagra, because they're going out trying to do things. Y'all get what I'm saying? Okay. And so what I'm saying, when we pray amiss, we're praying for God to heal or do something so we can continue in the sinful lifestyle that we're living in. That's praying amiss. Lord, you need to let me get this money so I can show them who I am. I can show them I'm just as important as that. Lord, give me this car so I can show them how successful I am. Lord, give me this or that so I can impress some people and show them. And God said, you don't need to show anybody. All you need to show me that you're willing to change and humble yourself yourself and walk in the kingdom and, and, and he said when I'm when I get ready to raise you up I'll raise you up. see that 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 you see what I'm talking about that, that's praying praying amiss or praying for things praying for you know the cursing folks the woman cursing preachers and stuff because they didn't agree with what the preacher said trying to curse praying amiss yes, trying to ask God to do something that he doesn't do which is curse and out of his will. Y'all get what I'm saying? So it's, it's crazy stuff going on. And we have to recognize when we're praying what? Amiss. And that's part of this, this fleshly thing, that, that, that blood, that wrong blood thing. And Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just flesh. Pride is just flesh. He, God said he hate. One thing God said, he say he hates stuff. He said he hate a prideful look. So he hated. And you know, you have to be so careful when you pray. And because if you pray in a minute, you can be doing it and you will honestly be thinking that you, the three of us, in agreement. In agreement. I'm telling you. And, and you know, think about, I want y'all to think about this and then I, I hit you. Oh. So hold. Either you, you're walking in agreement either with the Spirit of God. And you're getting your flesh into subjection, or you're walking in agreement with the evil spirit, and you're walking in your own flesh. Y'all get what I'm saying? Yes. That's why he said he wants us to commune and eat of his flesh. I want you to behave as if you're walking in my flesh. That's why communion is so important. I want you to behave as if my blood is running through your veins. And so what we're doing, I'm taking in his flesh and I'm drinking of his blood so that his walk will become my walk. How can two walk together unless they agree? Now, if I want to do it my own way, I'm walking in my own flesh with my own messed up blood doing, following an evil spirit. So either way it go, you walking in agreement with somebody. Y'all get what I'm saying? We, don't, we can't get away with that. Either we're walking in agreement with Satan, or you're walking in agreement with God. You, you, it, it, there's no, we can't escape that. The, the scriptures say either you're wearing one yoke or you're wearing another yoke. He said, he said, take off the yoke that you have and put on my yoke. He said, you can't get away from the yoke. I don't care how smart you think you are, how intelligent you think you are, how sneaky we are, you can creep in or whatever we're doing. Either we're going to be under one yoke or the other yoke. But he said, if you put mine on, he said, my burden, what, is easy. 
Yeah, yeah this, this, is, this is good. This is good. And so we don't need to fool ourselves, especially nowadays with all the stuff that's going on. We need to be fighting like crazy right now to get our flesh into subjection. Because this thing coming to a close. Yeah, it, 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 it's just two. It's just two. It's just two. Yeah. And you got to make an agreement. Yeah, you, you got to make an agreement with somebody. Either you're going to agree with God or you're not going to agree with God. It, it ain't no other way. You, can, you can't in word agree and indeed disagree. It's, he said, indeed, if you do it indeed, then you agreed in principle. So I can't come to church and then agree uh, with God. Okay, yeah, Lord, you're right. And then go out indeed and do something else. Y'all said that's a form of godliness, denying the power thereof. I look godly. I teach good. I blow the saxophone good. But I got five girlfriends and my wife. It looked godly. But I'm denying the power. Y'all get what I'm saying? The church is denying. Y'all know all the stuff going on in the church. The church is denying God's power to resist sin. And and to be able to resist sin, you have to have the To the right, yeah, you renew your mind to the right way. And when you choose to do the right thing, God gives you the power through the Holy Spirit. Is that why we can't form miracles? We're denying the power. He said in the last days, we'll have a form of godliness, but we'll deny the power. The church look good right now. Now think about it. We got the, some of the best singers in the church. But they won't pray God without a contract. <laughs> Think about it. It look good. You got to have an agent to praise God. And we're so fooled by that. We think that that's okay because that's what everybody's doing. But you can't find in scripture where anybody had to have an agent to praise God. That's why I was glad to run from that industry. Because if I, got, if, if, if I can't just go when I want to go and pray God, I don't need it. If I got to get your permission to go over to this church because it might affect our contract, I don't need you. If I, if I, if I got to just get paid every time I pray God, I don't need you. If God himself won't bless me. And he said, you storing your treasures up in heaven. That's not a song that I blowed in his name that he's not going to reward. At some point. I may not see it right now. But it's not a song that, 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 that's been blown. It's not a sermon that's been preached in his name. There's not a, a, a person that's been fed in the name of Jesus. There's not a nice act that's been carried out by you, that, that God is not going to recognize. And he said, he's storing your treasures up in heaven because whatever man can give you, he said, going to burn up. Yeah. Why you write that? Hmm. This question, if you are the part of the three, if you will understand that way. Yeah, yeah. But if you're not a part of the three, you will never get it. You'll never get that. you never get it. you never get it because it's got to be about what's what, yeah, that's what's happening. That's what's happening in the church. Yeah. The church, you know, we, we, we can't, we're not even a sanctified church no more. Everything goes. We come in and we praise and we do and then we leave and do, the, do, the, do what the world is doing. We're not separate. We're, we're equal with the world. He said, be ye holy like I'm holy. Yeah. You're set apart. We ain't doing it. And we're going to be shocked when the trumpet blow and some people sitting here in church and some people gone. Lord, why not me? Why didn't you take me? Well, he said, pray always that you be kind of worthy to escape all these things. I mean, that's praying always so we can escape what's going to come up on this world. 
if you're not praying that you can escape these things come up on you, might get left. Because he said, pray always. That's, I'm just saying, that's, that's, that's what he said. So he said, keep your mind focused. Now, I know you're strong, but we're in a last day moment. It, it needs to be strong. Mm-hmm. Forget what we got to deal with. Yeah, we're in a last day moment. This is serious. And I'm looking at the world, and then we talked about Sunday, and I'm going to give you this again. Homosexuality, according to scripture, is, is not the issue. Sin is the issue. And the scripture said that the reason that God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah was because of all the sin before homosexuality. He said that people were prideful. He said that's why he destroyed us. He said they were prideful. He said they had plenty of food. And they were lazy. And he said they wouldn't lift up their hands to help the poor people out. And he said... Then the abominations came in like homosexuality. Now, watch this. He said the same thing in Romans 1. Go read it. He said men, he said, begin to worship other things, turn away from God, do all these sins, commit all these sins. Not homosexuality, that wasn't the one. All these other things, pride and all this other stuff. Then he said, because of this, I turned them over to a reprobate mind. I allowed them to think that the wrong things were right and the right things were wrong. I turned them over to a reprobate mind. He said, and when I did that, he said, women began to sleep with women and men began to sleep with men. The reason the United States is in the condition that it's in, we have a reprobate mind and we think what's wrong is right and what's right is wrong and God has turned us over. Homosexuality is just the end result. Of pride and not feeding the poor, the denying the power of God. This is just the end result. And you can't tell these people in America that homosexuality is wrong. And the reason you can't tell them, because God has turned us over to a reprobate mind. And every nation that has been turned over to a reprobate mind in short time has been destroyed. Every nation. And if God allow America to continue, he has to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. He's got to apologize to the uh, Egyptian kingdom. He's got to apologize to the Babylonian kingdom that fell. And he's got to apologize to the Roman Empire that fell. These are all of the kingdoms that have existed before the United States. But God is just. And the same way that he judged them, It's the same way he going to judge this nation. And he said the only way you won't get judged is you got to come out of her. You can't let your heart be like Sodom. Yeah, yeah, just like Lot. This is what he's telling us today. United States, we're at a point of no return. This, This is it. Yeah, because we've been turned over. And the evidence is there that we have been turned over. You can pray for the United States all you want. But my suggestion would be pray for the individuals in the United States so that they might get saved. This is it. Right. He, he, he said, yeah, exactly. He said, if, if I can find 50 righteous men, he said, will you spare that city? He right. said, if I find 50 righteous, he said, I'll leave the city alone. Abraham negotiated all the way all down, way down. down. to 10 men. Yeah. Good and he said, if you can find 10 men, and God looked at him and said, you know what? If I can find 10 righteous in that city. I spare the city. Now, I want to show you that God will spare it for us Hallelujah. if we walk in according to what he wants. He said, if my people, he didn't say then, he said, if my people who are called by my name 
will humble themselves and pray and seek my faith. And, and see, he didn't stop right there. He said, and turn. That's the, that's the power right there. Turn from the wicked way. That means you can't just come in and praise and not turn from the wicked way. You just can't come in and pray and sing song and then go sleep with your boyfriend every night. You can't just come and sing song and get your drink on when you leave. You can't just come and sing song and go home and cuss everybody in your family out. You can't just come and sing song and then cuss everybody at work out. You can't come and sing songs and disrespect the elders, won't take care of the people you know around you, you know, always talking about folk, on the phone, gossiping. It just don't work. He said they got to turn from your your wicked ways. He said, then, when you do all that, he said, then you're here from heaven. He said, I'll come down and vision, I'll heal what? Your land. Yes, mm -hmm. well, I just want to say that because I like that part right there, because the turning part gives us a chance to walk in. It, the it, it gives us an opportunity. Right there. When we make that turn, we're going to have to turn the three that you've been talking about. It's opportunity. Yeah. It's opportunity. Yeah. It's opportunity. And the blood is our witness. The blood is the witness that either testifies for you or it testifies against you. And when Adam messed up, the blood that was speaking on his behalf began to speak against him. And God came along and he took these animals and he said, since your blood is screaming guilt, I'm going to take these animals and I'm going to kill these animals because they hadn't done anything. And I'm going to kill them and I'm going to allow them to shed their blood. And at least it won't appease me. Uh, it, it won't take away sin, but it'll at least appease me. If I can hear the innocent blood crying to me, at least it'll appease me long enough till my son get down there and shed his blood. At least every time a lamb, a lamb squeal. At least every time I hear one screaming out in agony, at least it'll remind me of what my son is going to do. And I hold off on my judgment because I can hear the innocent blood of that lamb. And one of the things that they had to do, they had to come and they had to kill their own animal. You didn't, the priest, you couldn't just take the animal in there and let the priest kill it. You had to go in there and you had to put the knife to that thing yourself. And you had to watch the agony of that animal dying so that you could live. You had to watch the, 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 the contortions on its face. You had to hear the squeals. You had to watch the blood squirt and all of that so you could live. And that's why it was so important for them to bring the sacrifice. So they could understand that there was an exchange for, for your life. That something had to die a brutal death so that you might have life. And so then he compares himself, Jesus does, to these animals who were brutally beaten and brutally died and who squealed and screamed and was in agony and in pain. He said, that's me. Yes. So that you can have life. And Go ahead. No, I'm going to say, too, that to, to every time we you know, go through that process, every time we kill something, we kill the spirit that was in the animal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we when we when we sacrifice yeah. this flesh, yeah. they're squealing yeah. and screaming at us. Y'all is screaming at us. Go on and do it. Go on and say it. <laughs> but when we deny the power of God to help us resist and overcome, y'all y'all get what I'm saying. So this is why he did. It. So we got the, we got the three witnesses. We got the blood. And, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and Jesus came, born of the water, had the perfect blood himself, and the Spirit testified. And the Spirit never left Jesus because the Spirit was testifying that the blood was perfect. The pastor said something out the service the other day. He said that, he said that did, you, did you notice that Jesus had to make the Spirit leave? The spirit didn't leave on its own. <laughs> it didn't leave on its own. He was on the cross. And the spirit, because it was witnessing that the blood was good, wouldn't leave. 
And the blood wouldn't leave. And Jesus had to say, into your hands, I commend my spirit. He had to tell the spirit to go because I got to take on their sins. And I know I hadn't done anything. And, and your order is to listen to the blood. But I'm giving you a command to leave and go be with the father so I can pay the price for their sin. And he became sin for me and you. And the scripture said when he got down and paid the price in hell. He said, after he had done that, after he had shed off all our sin. The blood was still good. And the spirit heard that cry. And he said on that third day, he was quickened by the Holy Spirit. That's, that's good, ain't it? That's good. And because his blood was so good, it washed all of those people who had been waiting on him. And so when he got up, all the blood washed that had been waiting on him got up because the same blood that was crying from Jesus was also crying from them. And so now the blood, the spirit can come live with them. Mm -hmm. he, he, he led captivity captive. The blood would never ever what, lose his power. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious, it that flow. That makes me what? Why does no? No other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That's some good stuff right there, y'all. That's some good stuff. And so we got a perfect, we got a perfect uh, blood witness of Jesus. The blood never loses its power. And everybody whose soul is washed in the blood can have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is always listening to his blood and I can't lose the Holy Spirit because I'm washed in his blood. It hears the cry of the Holy of the blood that says he's okay. He's innocent. He's clean. He's pure. And I know it's not because of what I did, but it's because of what Christ did. Now let's get back to those two men that we talked about at the beginning of the thing. The sacrifice had been made. That's right. The fire had came down to the altar. Consume the sacrifice. And the rule was that you were supposed to go get the coal from the altar where the fire was burning, where the sacrifice had been approved. You couldn't just go anywhere and get the fire. You had to go get the approval, the approved fire. Because when you go get the approved fire, it means that the sacrifice was accepted by God. So you can't just go somewhere else and light your own fire and take the coals and then go in there and pray to God. This is what they did. This is what they, they went. They lit their own fire. And the scripture said it was strange fire. It didn't come from an approved place. It came from a fleshly place. But, they, you know, apparently they were trying to get, get, go in there and get some glory on their own. Because the scripture said that they, you know, God, you know, Moses had to tell Aaron that they weren't glorifying him. So if they weren't glorifying him, they were glorifying themselves. So they went in for themselves, trying to glorify themselves, and they lit their own fire trying to go in there quickly. And they went in there and tried to offer a prayer before God using a strange fire. From the wrong altar, a non approved fire. So you guys see this because the only reason that God approved the fire from that thing was because the sacrifice was perfect, number one. And the blood was a witness that the sacrifice was perfect. And they had sprinkled the blood all over the place. And so the Holy Spirit was there witnessing that that was the fire that was okay, y'all. Because the Holy Spirit is what? The fire. We remember what we studied? He yeah. said he's coming not to baptize with water, but he's baptizing with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So this fire was a representative of the Holy Ghost. So you don't just go, go get any fire. You got to go get the fire of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost fire is a witness that the blood is still good because the sacrifice was perfect. This is the danger of trying to get to God on your own. Because in order to try to get to God on your own, you ignore the perfect sacrifice that Jesus made. Then you ignore the blood that was shed that gives a perfect witness. Then you ignore the Holy Spirit that is a witness to that perfect blood. 
And when you ignore all three of those things and you try to get in in your own manner and in your own way, the only thing you speak is death. Y'all get that? There's no other name by which men can be saved except by the name of Jesus. And that's because there were three witnesses on earth. The blood, the water, and the spirit. And these three agree in one. He was born of water. He was a man who had the perfect blood that testified, that was a witness that he never sinned and the spirit never left him because the spirit was there as a witness to say there's nothing wrong with the blood. Absolutely. It has, has to be. And that's why we should be joyous if we exemplify even the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Because that would mean that the blood had to wash you in order for the Spirit to use you. Y'all got to see that. And so, so, so just, just bearing the gifts of God is a sign that you've been approved already. A unction in the Holy Spirit of the Holy Spirit ought to just tell you that you that you've been approved by God. You know what I'm saying? Just the fact that you're enjoying this right now ought to tell you that you are approved of God. The Holy Spirit. This is my son, in whom I am well pleased. That's beautiful because we're going to end on that. He comes up out of the water. John has already testified that this is the one who's going to baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. But it had to be an agreement. All three. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And so we see the Son coming up out of the water. We see the Father speaking from heaven. Y'all got to see it. And you see the Holy Spirit coming upon him like a dove. So we see them three in agreement. But then Jesus comes along and he said, don't call me. Why you call me good? And the reason he said that is because even though we agree in heaven, we got to make sure this thing going to agree on earth. And so I got to make sure that I don't mess up the blood and, and, and then mess up the relationship with the spirit. So I got to walk perfectly in my flesh. And the only way I'm going to do that is by what's already written, what, in heaven. Yeah. I'm just a man. Now, now, since you mentioned that, I thought about something. This is what we have to keep in mind when we start talking about the Antichrist and then what happened. Okay, and we have to keep in mind about the witnesses. Yeah. Yeah, we got to keep all that in mind because the Antichrist, I mean, it goes back to what we were saying earlier. You got the, you got the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. You got the, that's the Trinity, all working together as one. And then you got you got John the Baptist, who was the forerunner, and then Scripture say Elijah is the forerunner before the tribulation period starts for Christ's return. Okay, so Satan copies this. So you got the dragon, you got the uh, you got the uh, Antichrist, which is going to be his offspring, and the evil spirit. Then you got the false prophet, who is similar to. Uh, uh, John the Baptist and Elijah, who introduces the the false prophet, I mean the uh, the Antichrist as God. So you and, and it says it's going to be such a strong image because he look he's going to be he's going to be born on Christmas because you know it ain't really Jesus' birthday, but the world thank it is. So he's going to be born on on Christmas. He going he going to die and he's going and Satan going to enter into him. And he's going to be resurrected on Easter because Easter really is not the re uh, uh, Jesus' resurrection day. It, you know, he would pass over when he, when he died and he was, he, he was resurrected on the Feast of First Fruit. It wasn't Easter. 
But since the world don't know that, the world gonna the world gonna see uh, this man who was born on December twenty fifth and who was resurrected on Easter, and he's gonna have all these great wonders. He ra- he was raised from the dead. Because now, if you don't know nothing about Christianity, you do know that we believe that Jesus was raised from the dead. And so when you see this man raised from the dead, born on on Christmas and raised on Easter, and he got all this power in his hand. Not only that, he's gonna have a third of the angels with him who fell, and he's gonna look like he got. A heavenly host with him. The scriptures say he's going to be showing all these miraculous signs and wonders, and he's going to be speaking beautiful things, and so he's going to look like God. But you know how close, if you look at Israel, the uh, temple they're building now, you know, they've been building, so how close are they to finishing this? Well, they said that if, if they got the approval, let's say today, they could have it done in, in less than three and a half years because they got all the furniture, all the pieces already. They got all that stuff. That's where they expect that they, that Christ is going to return to. So if, uh, if the Antichrist enters into that, you know, all this coming together right there will be a play on whether you know, the Lord will yeah. return. Yeah, it's, it's happening. Yeah. They're getting all the stuff ready. It's just a matter of time. And I tell us this because we just need to be ready. For ourselves. If nobody else get ready, you be ready. If nobody else sanctify themselves, you sanctify yourself. Don't worry about me. Worry about yourself. I pray for y'all, but I'm trying to keep keep my mind straight. It's a fight just to keep my mind straight. For real. So Let's keep each other in prayer and keep each other lifted up. Anyway, any more questions?